Hey gang, Matt from Atlas Precision Consulting. In today's video, we're gonna talk about Item Master Inquiry. Uh, we're not gonna go into everything in Item Master Inquiry because we don't wanna put up a two hour, three hour long video. Uh, so real quick, uh, you can launch it directly from a keyboard shortcut. It's my favorite way to do it, which is hitting F2 on the keyboard. Um, now you can obviously um, look it up as well in a search, just like you do any other module within P21. But those uh, hotkeys or those keyboard shortcuts are nice to have. Um, now, it will generally load up as a blank screen. Sometimes, depending where you launch from, it may try to pull in an item. Um, just a couple things I want to cover real quick. Uh, there are a couple settings in inventory management general that I want to call attention to. One is the days display back, which uh, we have it set to 30. Um, there's also a couple about opening up to all locations and bin lot uh, allocations automatically in item master inquiry. Uh, the 30 days is important. We use that because we don't want to go back too far. It makes the system slower if you're trying to pull even more records. By default, uh, we have our set to, to be uh, all locations. Um, you can also, there are also some user settings that can kind of affect that as well, but we're not going to go into that in here. You would obviously put your item in here. And again, this is that going back 30 days that we talked about. Uh, you can always uh, launch it from your history if it's an item that you had already been looking at. So real quick on this front tab, it's made up of three main sections by default. You have your location uh, box here on the left. This shows you quantity available, last count, and a couple other bits of information. To the right are your different unit of measures for an item. So if you did have a purchasing unit of measure or a case or whatever you want to call it, uh, those would be listed along with their unit sizes and their weights. Uh, down below is your availability and your inflows and outflows of the item based on whichever location you are clicked on. So if I click on location 20, that changes down here. Um, now, I'm not going to go through every single one of these tabs because we could spend a lifetime to go through all of these tabs, but just a couple things I want, I want to call out. One thing, net quantity available down here at the bottom, uh, that is not net stock, so don't confuse that. Uh, that is essentially just your quantity available um, with some future order stuff put into it. Uh, most people are going to look at just quantity available, uh, but if you are using release schedule or future orders that could affect that, that's what your net quantity available is. Uh, inflows, outflows, pretty self-explanatory. Um, again, I'm not going to go over every single tab, but I'll just call a couple out. Um, you can go to the lot tab and again, whatever location you started off on in that location window, that's what's going to carry over to each one of these tabs. You can change that on a lot of the tabs that you're in. Sometimes it doesn't look right, especially on the purchase stock card. Uh, it can cause some issues. So real quick, if, if you're seeing something funny, you can always come back to your item master inquire screen, right click on it. Uh, and hit the refresh data and then I'll just re-pull it in. So um, again, we'll jump back to the lot tab. You know, this is showing, you know, however many lots we have, quantity allocated and all that good stuff. Down below would be the bins where those lots are stored. We also have a bin tab. Uh, I'll call out a couple extra uh, car or, uh, tabs here. Purchase.card. If you've watched any other videos, you've probably seen uh, this one more than you like to count. Uh, this is the same screen you're going to see uh, when you run Porg, but in Porg it's called Calculation. Uh, this is just really good if you're if you're trying to do some uh, research on a single item, seeing what kind of impact your, your current net stock and ordering point and all that stuff is having on this item. Usage tab is a very good one too. Uh, usage tab shows you your usage of your item, uh, which includes your actual usage, filtered usage, uh, scheduled usage, and forecast usage. Um, last thing I want to call out, is that date thing. So again, we default by going by 30 days just to make it quicker, but that doesn't mean like if you go to the sales history tab, you can't come over to the start date and change that while you're in there. So it's probably good practice to keep it as a lower number, maybe not 30 days, maybe that's that's too short for you, um, but don't go out like three years or to the beginning of time uh, just because it's gonna cause a drag unnecessarily. Uh, another piece of advice, if you're seeing something allocated uh, and you're looking at the open orders and open POs and you don't see the quantity that matches up to that front tab or even the purchase stock card tab, uh, most likely it's the start date that's the issue. Um, again, we don't have time to go through every single one of these, uh, but if you guys do have questions about other tabs in here or other things about automatic query or really just anything in general, uh, put a comment down below and we'll try to address those concerns. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. And as always, uh, Atlas is here for your Profit 21 needs. Thanks, guys.